Video 4, part 2 of the IPS i5 review, the beginner friendly super urban transport. So let me not beat around the bush and just straight up tell you that I've been riding and loving the IPS i5 for the last three months. And I'm going to assume that since you're watching the video, you're thinking of perhaps getting one. It is a unique little scooter and not at all the popular choice in the EUC community. So I'll tell you why it might be the right scooter for you. So in part one of the review, I mostly talked about the basic attribute of the scooter like speed and size. And if you haven't seen it already, you can check out the comments section below for a link to that video. So for part two, I'm going to focus more on the qualities of the i5 that are the result of a combination of its specification. I'll also share some of my day-to-day -day experiences living with a scooter. Well, enough with my babbling and on to the show. Criteria 3. Beginner Friendly This was probably the most important criteria I had when I was searching for my first electric unicycle. Being a complete novice, and I mean to the extent of not even knowing anyone else who rides an electric unicycle, I really had no idea how hard it would be to learn how to ride one. I did see someone riding around in the street one day and of course my immediate thought was, boy I need to get me one of those. I knew I have to learn on my own and was hoping that I wouldn't embarrass myself too much while wobbling my way through the first few weeks. Now there is a great thread on the EUC forum, links below and thank you for all the info, awesome resources. Um, learning how to ride. The one conclusion I came to after reading all 14 plus pages of it is that everyone learns very differently. Some people pick it up in hours while others took months to get comfortable with riding. I was certainly hoping that it would be the former for me, but who knew? Few of the things I heard are that maneuverability is much appreciated. And one of the really helpful tips I read while I was spending hours riding back and forth through the public hallways at my apartment complex, no doubt terrifying the elderly residents. Um, and by the way, my wife also thought that I was completely nuts at the same time, uh, was practicing twisting the wheel at low speed. Sort of like that twisting action people do with bicycle steering when they're trying to go slow. Something about the need to compensate for a bicycle's tendency to be continuously falling, which sounds totally weird, but I do actually believe is how bicycles work. Please consult your local physicist for a more accurate or correct explanation. So I was, I was a bit skeptical about doing the twist, but since it was pretty easy to execute, I figured, why not? And surprisingly, it actually led to my first eureka moment. I had when I finally got the feel of balancing on the unicycle. Now here's where the thinness and profile of the i5 wheels come in. Remember that talk about the tiny contact patch from part one? Yes, less stability at speed and reduced capacity to deal with pothole, yes, but you also get extreme maneuverability with how little resistance you have to deal with from that tiny, tiny patch. I'm convinced I can literally turn on a dying on this scooter. Now, aside from the circus act, I can also make some pretty sharp turn with the scooter. I'm sure with more experience, I'll be able to do more, but you get the idea. Another thing I worry about was the width. I heard that it would be easier to balance having a thicker unicycle so you can lean your calf against the body for additional leverage to help maintain, maintain uh, stability. And this would be one place where the thinness of the i5 works against you, but, but it was easy to solve. I simply taped chunks of packing foam onto the side of the scooter. 
which gave my calf a comfortable resting spot and was easy to adjust. I do have to say that as, as I get more comfortable with the wheel, I find that I need to rely on the calf support less and less. On the other hand, foot position and the type of shoe I wear actually is starting to have a lot more effect on the overall sense of stability at higher speed. In the beginning, I mainly kept my foot completely stationary in the fear of losing grip and my balance with it, but as I become more and more comfortable with the i5, I learned to subtly shift my foot on a regular basis to help maintain balance. It's still nice to have grippier shoes, but I'm less worried about it than before. So finally going back to the question, was it easy to learn on the i5? Well, the proof is in the pudding as they would say. I purchased the i5 a little bit less than three months ago with no prior experience with a unicycle, electric or not. And I would say that I'm pretty darn comfortable with it at this point. I'm actually starting to learn how to ride backward at this point. So I give it a five knee pass on the beginner friendly charge. Criteria four, value, touching. Now this one is going to be a little bit difficult to quantify since it varies depending on your financial situation. So if you're a dot-com millionaire, this is all irrelevant. And by the way, why are you watching YouTube? Now, at $650 from eWheel, and yes, I bought it just like everyone else, it isn't the cheapest scooter out there. But it is certainly a long way off from the middle to higher range. By that I mean bigger wheels, bigger battery slash motor, and higher speed scooter from Kingsong Gotway or nine bots. On foreign, there's certainly people who gone straight to the larger scooters, and I would agree to that idea if you live in an area where more open spaces and longer distances was the norm. However, I do have to say that I'm a little bit amazed that people are willing to drop upwards of fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars on a hobby they had no prior experience with, but maybe that's just because I'm poor. The other factor to consider is that the EUC hobby is very, very new. My impression, and please comments below if you disagree, are that the models are going through extremely rapid iterations where the new models introduced are significantly better than the models from one or two years ago. Combined with the cost of shipping means that there doesn't seem to be a thriving second-hand market. So I think it's important that you pick the right one that you can keep and continue to use in the future. The IPS i5 is unique in that for a quote unquote beginner scooter, it has a particular tray, i.e. its thinness and lightness that is unmatched by even the high-end scooters on the market. So for me, even though this is my only scooter for now, the 9bot Z10 is really calling out to me. I am almost thankful that there is a long waiting list currently, but I do see myself continue to use the i5 even if I were to pick up a larger, faster, and more capable scooter. I wouldn't imagine wheeling something like that to work, maybe on a sunny Friday, but that would be like showing up to work on a dirt bike. Maybe some of you get to do that, but I would be a little bit, a little bit leery that my boss might think that I'm a child. So I think there is a pretty good chance that the i5 will hold its value, at least for me in the long term, given its inherent uh, convenience factor. So value? Compared to a lot of other toys I have purchased over the years, I give it 5 out of 5 fake price tags for the wife. I, I swear this thing is $20. Criteria 5, the perfect urban ninja transport. Does that really count as a criteria? Well, maybe the correct term should have been unassuming, less intrusive, or unintimidating, but I like urban ninja. I think that fits better. Now, as I have mentioned before, I happen to live in a pretty busy part of the world. East Village is sort of the drunken nightlife capital of New York City. As a matter of fact, 
nightlife sometimes party so hard that it wraps all the way around into the daytime as well so the ideal commute transportation for me at least is something that gets me from point A to point B quickly efficiently and without raising a lot of fuzz or attracting too much attention I don't mind the occasional curious questions but do you really want people to flag you down while you're on your way to work and pep you with questions also, the legal status of any sort of personal electric vehicle is sort of still a murky area in New York City. Actually, much of the rest of the world as well, since they're still sort of a new thing. So the last thing I wanted to do is to attract any sort of attention, and the i5 fits incredibly well with that understated utilitarian mentality. When I first started writing the i5, I really had no idea what to expect when it comes to how other people would react to the scooter. I do find myself on the sidewalk quite frequently, and although I am always respectful and slow down to a walking pace around people, I still don't know how people would react. What I found was a reaffirmation of the amazing New York trade call, I'm faced by whatever the world may bring. But I also think that the thinness and front profile of the i5 was a contributing factor to the general nonchalant acceptance I got. It simply did not look like a vehicle that's capable of running down your child. So over the last three months, I also got the hop off, fill up the pedal and go motion down pad. As funny as it sounds, the i5 works really well when it's not working as a scooter. So in the end, I think that the iFi does achieve what they had set up to design, a convenient, unobtrusive, safe and easy to live with electric unicycle. However, that's also probably why it isn't as popular in the electric unicycle circle, since it's not an exciting scootering itself, but what you can do with it on the other hand is another story. So I give it 5 out of 5 Urban Ninja Stars. Now architects like to talk about scales, since it's something that people don't notice until it's wrong. You never think about the height of a doorknob or the size of a brick on the side of a building, but both gave subtle clues as to the size of your environment. They're pleasuring something just being the right size, like the original iPhone. It looks and feels like it's just the right size in your hand. I would say the same thing of the i5, it feels like it's in a perfect scale to a city. Its speed is in line with what a running person can reach and its compactness allows it to be easily carried whenever you go. Remember all the excitement years ago before the introduction of the Segway? How people thought that it was going to revolutionize people's lives and the way cities are planned? Ultimately its size and cost got in the way of that vision. Well, here's the scooter that delivered on all of Segway's original promises, at a tenth of its cost. Well, with a bit of learning curves. It is, in my humble opinion, the best electric unicycle for a beginner, or for those people who just like to get to where they need to go a little bit faster. Now, who wouldn't like that? Finally, if you watch this video all the way to the end, thank you! Now if you enjoy watching this video as much as I enjoy making them, then please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. It'll help keep the fire burning and more videos coming. So until next videos, thank you!